Well, as you can see, I've got lots of keyboards and lots of boxes and stuff like that, but the center of it is this computer that's sitting right here. And the computer is like a player piano, except electronic. In the old days with a player piano, if you wanted to save a fat performance or something, you'd sit him down at a player piano and he'd play the piano, and it would punch holes in a roll of paper to record the details of his performance. Well, the computer does the same thing. It doesn't actually record any sound when I'm working down here, but if I play my master keyboard, the computer records electronically all the information about what I played, which notes I played, when I played them, how hard I hit the key, how long I held it down, all that sort of thing. Uh, it also records more detail than a player piano could possibly record, and it allows me to go back and edit the information. It's as if, say, Fats played a, a few notes a little bit late, you could go back and move those holes in the piece of paper and make it right. Well, th with the computer, you can get into the memory of the computer and move the notes around and change octaves and play things backwards and correct them so the timing is perfect and all that sort of thing. <laughs> got to be careful the way I say this, but where's the talent here? Is, is the computer doing all the bright stuff here? Do you have to be able to create and write music yourself to, to yeah. start at this? Yeah, a, a lot of people would think that, well, gee whiz, you know, why bother knowing anything about music? Why bother having any talent? You don't have to do anything particularly well. A computer will take care of the details. But really, it's, it's like word processing for music. Uh, just because you have a great word processor doesn't mean you're going to write a great novel or a great radio piece on Metro Morning. Um, you, even though the r word processor will make your typewritten page look nice, and in some cases it'll correct your spelling, it, d it doesn't come up with the ideas for you. And it's very similar with, uh, with this computer music stuff. You had to put it in in the first place. That's right. And if you aren't particularly musical or you don't play particularly well, and you're relying on the computer to fix things up, you'll probably find that the end result takes a lot longer to get to, and it sounds pretty stiff when it comes back. Let's go through the, some of the sounds then that your keyboard can make. Okay, well, this is the Metro Morning theme that I've been working on, so I've set up everything in the studio to do all the various different parts. This keyboard here is a digital sampler, which means it records sounds from the real world and allows you to play them back on the keyboard. I've set it up to be a uh, set of drums at the moment. This is the bass drum. That's the snare drum. That's an open hi-hat cymbal, closed hi-hat cymbal. That's a crash cymbal. And those are tom-toms, and I've got all kinds of other sounds spread out across the keyboard here on this one. A marimba. That's a string section. And those are vibraphones. There's a choir, and then we have the females at the top end of the keyboard, and the men down at the bottom. I have trouble using the telephone at times, so this is all fairly clever stuff to me. What you get here then is the ability to create a, a big band sound all in, all in your basement and all alone. That's right, yeah, I generally work all by myself. <laughs> it's very lonely. <laughs> so when you started out on the Metro Morning theme, you started out with the melody line and then you worked on it? Yeah, actually, the, the first idea I had was this sort of um, Latin American marimba part. And I thought, that, that's just kind of got a nice, bright, sort of morning feel. And, and uh, when we were discussing what we wanted for the theme, we all agreed that it'd be nice to have something that reflected a little bit of the multi multicultural character of Toronto. And it seemed to me that this would, be, uh, this would sound kind of bright and morningish, and also would be a reference to uh, one of a number of different styles of music that I wanted to incorporate. Um, I could get quite fancy with it and say, gee, I wonder what this sounds like backwards. And I go over here and I click reverse. And now we have it an octave higher and backwards. And you know, that might make an interesting percussion part. <laughs> but you know, backwards is not a new trick at all. Well, no, you know, I mean, sometimes when you're telling people about this stuff, they say, oh yeah, well, that's great to play those games with this stuff, but what's the point? Actually, running things backwards is, is a, an absolutely classical principle of composition and arrangement. Um, when Bach was writing, fugues and canons, he would write a short theme. And then if you're going to develop that theme into something that sounds like a fugue, for example, one of the things you'll do is you'll play the theme, what's called retrograde, which means backwards. And so you will, first you'll state the theme, and then you might state it again, but another instrument might come in playing the theme backwards, or possibly backwards and at twice the effective tempo or an octave higher. And these are actually, you know, standard uh, 
tricks, if you want to call them, that have been around for a very long time. But I bet Bach didn't do it in the basement with an Atari. <laughs> no, no, he did it on this uh, on this enormous cathedral organ, which actually at the, at, the, at the time was high technology and a lot of people probably considered to be quite a technological monster. Let's build the Metro Morning theme then. Put, put all the pieces together for me. Okay, well, as I mentioned, the first thing I came up with was this particular uh, marimba idea. And then I thought it'd be nice to fill that out with some very high sound. So I added some high violins and some this sort of handbell kind of sound, and that sounded like this. And you can hear that, you know, suddenly there's this tinkling stuff going on, and it's quite nice. Then I thought of adding the bass part, and I thought it'd be nice to play the melody on a bass, because it's not something that you usually hear. You know, usually the melody comes in on a higher instrument, but I thought, let's, let's state an introduction melody on a bass. But the beauty always is that I can go into whoever it is that I'm working for and say, this is what I've got so far, what do you like, what don't you like? And they can say, oh, gee, well, you know, we, we like marimbas, but we, we don't like violins, you know, so could you change the violins to flutes or something? And it's really, it's so flexible that it's, it's just not a headache at all. As we said, uh, we don't like the trumpet so much. Give us uh, something else. And you came up with the pan flute. That's right. You, uh, my original uh, demo of the melody line, which we'll be hearing in a little while, uh, was played on trumpets. And it was thought that was perhaps a little too brash sounding. So I uh, hunted around and, and came up with this sound here, which is kind of like pan flutes, but played with a lot of um, reverberation and delay on it to make it sound a little unnatural, but also a little different. Spencer, play the whole thing for me now, and let's have a listen to the pieces as they come in. All right. Well, what we're going to do is play back some of the sounds recorded onto this multi-track tape recorder. So we'll start the tape recorder, and it'll send a signal to the computer about what's going on, and hopefully everything will go all together. <laughs> 